Hello, Hunters! I'm the Survival This, and we're going to be starting our new series for Way of the Hunter, Matakiri Park, today. Last week, we covered up the last of Cabela's uh, Big Game Hunter 2005 Adventures. We went through all that. As nice as it was to go back and complete that first hunting game, it made me very eager to get to uh, Way of the Hunter and play Mat Matariki Park here. Because I'm going to be going back to mouse and keyboard, and because of uh, the upgrade to the internet I have gotten since I last did Away the Hunter, now I can spend more time per episode if I need to, so it's not going to feel like I'm super rushed for stuff to do, which is going to let me hunt a little bit more to how I would like going forward. But, we know that's out, there's a new map and story, there are tripod stands or something new, and some tweaks and fixes have been done. One of the nice things about having coming to the DLC after a few weeks since it's been released, is any immediate fixes, patches, etc. that had to be done have probably already been handled. So I'm hoping it shouldn't be too bad for, uh... What we're after, although I'm just trying to think of how I'm going to change this up. If I go to story... There we go. Yeah, so we want to go to Matariki Park. And we'll go for... I don't think I want to go to a ranger quite yet. I think I'll stick on hunter for the difficulty. But we will play this and see how it goes, and reading some of the Steam reviews, the DLC is kind of like mixed for its review score. It's Some people had issues with the animals being a lot of reskins or crossovers from previous content. Uh, the performance of the map can vary wildly from the sounds of it, so I might have to let the intro play, see how it starts, and then maybe do a jump cut in the footage just to change the graphics up to try to make sure everything plays smoother for us. But we're going to let everything load up, hop into Matakiri, or Matariki, I gotta double check and make sure I'm actually pronouncing it correctly, and enjoy our time with it. But this reserve is set in New Zealand, if I believe, so there's not any large predator species to worry about, it's all going to be more, mostly, passive game animals. I think wild boar are one of the huntable things on the map, so... Matariki Park. There we go. A Matariki Park. A destination for hunters who do not compromise on their vacation stay. So far, From intro cut seems, seems good. Full of unique vegetation to challenging mountain ranges, Matariki Park is beaming with Matariki. wildlife native to North America, Europe, and Asia. Few places in the world offer the chance to hunt for Himalayan tar, Rocky Mountain elk, Sika, Sambar, and Red Deer all at the same time. Let your hunting instincts go wild, and enjoy your stay. Oh, actually, pretty nice quick story intro. I'm not sure if we're going to have like a pre-made character we're following along with or what, but... To start the story, enter the pool, interact with the drink on the float. Beware, this story contains spoilers from previous reserves. We recommend completing their stories before you start. I'm pretty sure I have completed all the stories for the other reserves. I'm trying to remember here. Uh, the first one was going up... Uh, was in, uh... God, I'm trying to remember what the state was. I was dealing with, like, the... Taking over the family business a little bit and one of this stupid idiot pricks who started spreading, like, false rumors about contaminated meat. Uh, do do. Yeah, recording, everything looks good there. Audio capture might be a little off, but we'll have to see how it kind of turns out after this first episode goes. But that was the first one. Transylvania map didn't really have a story to it, so there wasn't anything there. Uh, we did the Alaska one, we saw how that played out, and we did the Africa one. So, I'm not sure what it means for, like, spoilers from other reserves, but we'll probably start with the story, work our way kind of through that, and see what I want to tackle with it. Usually how we probably work it is go through all the story stuff, complete that, and then have a little bit of freedom with the, uh, other stuff. Yeah, this is an interesting little way to start things off. Tar Mari Hongi. <sighs> Taking a swim in a fancy lodge or staying at for Oh, okay, this is the main character from... Life can be... Ah, uh, the first expected. reserve. And what I expect is weeks of nothing but relaxation and hunting. Hello? Who could that be? River Knox here. Hello there. I see you're enjoying the pool already. I... You can see? Sorry, who is this? Let me introduce myself. I'm Andy, the owner of the lodge. The security system notified me that you'd arrived, and I had some cameras set up, so I just took a peek. Wait, you are THE Andy? The one and only. I can't believe it. The author of Tiny Stars in a Wolf-Eyed Sky is talking to me? I can't believe your grandfather had the nerve to reveal my real name. 
Wait, he did tell me that the owner of the lodge is the author, but never mentioned your name. He said you wouldn't be here anyway. Just please, keep this to yourself. You can count on me. As your biggest fan, I'd never do that. You know the saying, never meet your heroes. And technically, we haven't met. Yet. Well, here's the thing, dear biggest fan. Your grandfather contacted my assistant to make an arrangement that involves another guest who should be coming soon. Imagine my surprise. I can imagine. I had no idea somebody else was coming. I... Who is the lucky person? It's supposed to be a mystery until the guest arrives. Your grandfather's wish. Ugh. He really knows how to spice up my vacation. He was worried, by the way. Said he wasn't sure you'd arrived already? I don't have service here, so it's just the walkie-talkie for the next few weeks. Yeah, well, apparently they'll be arriving soon, and you're supposed to throw an impromptu welcome party. <sighs> Can't I throw a party for you instead? Do you remember what I said about meeting your heroes? My assistant left you a note in the kitchen so you can make preparations. Don't want to stress you out, but... You better get ready. Call me if you need anything. You don't have to ask me twice. And I almost forgot. Welcome to Matariki Park. Okay, so it seems we've gotten ourselves a little bit on the go. One nice thing is I'm already hearing, like, sounds of wildlife around us. I'm trying to remember what hunter sense is cue. That's it. That's one thing that I kind of going to have to get adjusted to again is how many different uh, senses and ways you can actually detect the animals once more in a hunting game. Cabela's was pretty limited for tracking in a lot of other options, so we'll have to get a little bit more used to the more modernized uh, takes on the, sub on the genre. But hopefully it'll only be like a weekend or two and then we'll be good to smooth everything out. Okay, welcome to Annie's Lodge. I hope you enjoy your stay. I've heard from your grandfather you are overworked and this is his answer. The best time place to recharge your batteries. And with company, it's even better, so another guest will be arriving soon. Here's an idea for starters. Food and drinks taste better when you pre when you prepare them yourself, don't they? Almost all the ingredients are in place, only one is missing. Himalayan tar meat. Locations marked on the next page. Don't forget to take care of the decorations that are in the box. Enjoy your stay, Andy. Okay. The assistant signed it in the name of the owner? Hmm. Strange. Okay, sirs. And let me just open the map. Now, I heard that this was a pretty contained map, all things considered, and with just the few lodges that are marked, it does look like it's going to be a little bit of a tighter one. But that might not be too bad of a thing either. So let me see uh, about trying to figure out where we have our uh, computer and room and everything, get ourselves set up with the proper inventory. Because I'm going to probably be making use of the... No, nope, probably Seems this one. like Andy has five dogs. <laughs> Hi, Babsy. Babsy. Kiwi. I can see why. Kiwi. Hello, Holden. Pizza. <laughs> awesome name. BB looks like trouble. You have some beautiful dogs, Andy. You've seen the pictures? Shame that none of them are hunting dogs. Holden looks like a wonderful blood-trailing dog. <laughs> yes. Shame chihuahuas are so loud. <laughs> Isn't he a corgi? Oh, whatever. Hmm. <laughs> okay, a little odd, but yeah. Now, let's see. Okay, so it looks like we don't actually have anything loaded up right now, so I can pick whatever I want. And I'm thinking... Uh, do do no. We want to go for two to six. We'll probably take the compound bow with us. Uh, maybe I'll try taking the three pin sight. I know I was having problems with it before, but I might be able to unequip it if I'm having more trouble with it. Now, the bigger thing is probably figuring out the best rifle I want to take with us. Because I'm thinking maybe I want a hunting tier of four. The reason I'm thinking that is because of, uh, that's three to 12, that's only two to seven. I might go for, 
that for it. All R3 and 15. Yeah, maybe we'll go for that one. Or no, we'll go with three to eighteen times magnification. That feels like that would give me the most accurate shots. Uh, gears. Again, it's kind of weird that we do only have like three gear slots, but all you have been. Oh, hang on, I might have to actually check the shop now. That I'm thinking about it. Cause yeah, we might have. I was thinking maybe we'd have some more gear selection in place. Uh, do do do. Oh, you know what? I can claim that. So I guess that's a freebie from the, uh, picking up the DLC. And actually, let me check and see if there's any other weapons that you might want to look at picking up. Although it looks like, yeah, a few things are just DLC weapons. So there was a DLC pack for weapons, I believe, released a while ago. And it looks like, aside from them, I've got everything else we're really after. And I don't see anything, like, really new for weapon options there. Uh, Gear-wise, it looks like we have everything that's released there. Attachment or attachments, I think we're good on as well. Uh, vehicles, I mean, if I want to pick up another UTV, I could. But I think we're fine there. Eh, maybe we'll pick up that just to have. Now, will that go in? Okay, it does go into here. So I do like they're starting to finally expand the gear slots for uh, what we'll have in place. Collar wise now. Okay, we'll probably want. To... Oh, I'm not exactly sure what we need for what we're after. Like, hmm. I'm trying to think of what the Himalayan tar might, like, be called in by. I know we don't really have any predator species, so I won't worry about that. Maybe we'll go for just the simple grunt collar. Uh,. The elk collar, because apparently... Oh, all right, I gotta switch the inventory slot. Deer grunt collar, the elk collar. And maybe the... Oh, it does look like there might be a chance for red deer. So we'll put that in for now. Everything, I think, should be pretty fine with that. Oh, and let me read more about hunting stands, as this is a new thing. So hunting tripod stands, also known as hunting tripods, are specialized equipment used by hunters to gain elevated vantage point, better visibility, and improved hunting success. You only place a limited number of tripods in every map, but you can always remove them and place them in more favorable locations. You can do it either on hunting map or by interacting with the equipment bag near the tripod. These sturdy, three-legged structures are typically placed in outdoor environments, often woody in wooded areas or open fields to serve several important purposes. Elevated vantage point. The hunting tripod allows, stand, allows hunters to be elevated off the ground, providing better line of sight and broader view of surrounding area. This improved perspective allows hunters to spot game animals from more easily and from a great distance. Concealment. Reduce visibility and scent of the hunter. Tripod stands can help hunters remain concealed from their prey. By positioning themselves above ground level, hunters can better hide their movements and scent, reducing chance of being detected. Improved accuracy, which gives reduced sway. A uh, stable platform of a hunting tripod can sing a clean hands hunters' accuracy when taking shots. Lack of wobbling or shaking that often occurs when shooting from the ground can lead to more precise and humane kills. Versatility. Are mobile and can be placed in various locations to make them versatile for different hunting situations. They can move to different spots in the same hunting area or transfer to new locations with ease. And camera and observation platform. In addition to hunting, tripod stands are often used by wildlife enthusiasts and photographers who want a stable platform for capturing images and observing wildlife in a non-intrusive manner. Okay, interesting. So we should be good to depart now. Open the door there and follow the front walk where I think we should be able to find our... Oh, hang on. Okay, I'm just reading in the bottom there. That's a little bit of a change to the UI, so I guess it's going to show, like, what weapon you're going to be getting out through the animations. It lets you know then. And, okay, we're out to here... Uh, I've got to imagine there is a road or something somewhere that we're going to get closer to. Okay, here's the road. Uh, doo -doo. Oh, apparently I've actually gone the wrong way for where I should be going. Uh, from the looks of it so far, I mean, it does look like there's going to be a lot of areas where there's going to be a good length of visibility, so I can probably... Oh, actually, one thing I do want to check now and think about it. I have a lot of range of visibility, so I'm thinking the hunting will be pretty easy with the rifle. 
Nothing new in the perks tree, though. I was kind of hoping we might see something for, like, the bows and crossbows getting their own tree. And I don't think we've actually gotten any more lever actions than just the single weapon we've been given so far. Like, aside from Grandpa's old rifle, I don't think anything else qualifies as lever action for the entire game. And let's see. Animals. Okay. Uh, do -do. Red Deer is a tier 6. I'll have to keep that in mind. Sitka Deer, though, is tier 5. Not a lot of tier 4s, actually. Although, truth be told, it might be because I haven't encountered them in, in game yet to know what their tiers rank as. I believe the encyclopedia uh, registers stuff as you encounter it. Yeah, I'll put the bow away for now. And I'm trying to remember... Alright, C toggles fast and slow walk. Control shifts us up and down. If I hold control, then we go low. Yeah, okay, I'm getting the hang of the controls again. And to get up there, it looks like we might as well just follow the main road by here and then up to that hunting area. But yeah, it does feel good to be back to mouse and keyboard. One of the things that I'm going to be very happy for is it'll be much easier lining up the shots that I'm trying to take. Trying to use a controller for it without having like a lot of experience uh, using the joysticks. It was a lot of struggling to try to get just the right shot I wanted, but now I think that's going to be so much easier to do. And hunt should go pretty smoothly. I don't know if... Okay, permission hunt required, so there will be some places I'll have to uh, probably open up permission to get in a little bit. Yeah, we'll just follow the road, focus on the first objectives we have, and go along with that. I need to remember that there are a number of traits that Way the Hunter has kind of unique to itself. One of them is... Okay, there are a few droppings on the road, and it does seem like there can kind of be the, uh... Just let me check the map. Okay, we're going to have a ways to go. Uh, I gotta remember as we're driving, because of the speed we're going, the game might stutter a little bit to load new cells we pass into. But it's nice to hear that there is some stuff out and about. I don't think I'll really be hopping out of the vehicle too much early on until we get to an area we can actually hunt in. But we're going to stop by that first little uh, lodge there. Likely that'll have some objectives for us to try completing in order to open the area up, so I might actually take a little stop there. See if we can open some places up and keep going further, too. But, ooh, some lovely views as we're going. I believe New Zealand has kind of plays host to a bunch of introduced species to itself that has been brought mainly just to be hunted in its uh, environment. Like, I know Red Deer 1, I think Fallow Deer might be another one on New Zealand. I don't actually know if they're in the game as one of the hunting animals for the reserve or not. I thought fallow deer were one of the introduced species to New Zealand. I don't have the most in-depth knowledge of what is there. I'm just trying to think off the top of my head, because as it said, there's a number of species from North America, Asia, and Europe introduced. I'm not actually sure what ramifications introducing a deer species... Ow. That might have uh, put a bit, a bit of a dent in the UTV. I don't know what consequences a species like deer being introduced would have. Like, I know normally how invasive species go and introduced species have gone. It has never really gone for the best in any regards. But because of New Zealand, I don't know if there was really like that many native deer species at all to the area. And because they're not like a predator species that would like drive out a local competition. Okay, we still have a little ways to go. I'm not sure how much the nat like the native environment would have suffered with a species like that being introduced to it. But my guess is we want to take this left and we might be at the lodge. Or towards wherever that spot is. Yeah, here we are. And there is a little thing to Ah, look at here. So, we'll just open the door, see what the objective is for this, and then probably keep on our way. That was one of the things about uh, the very first map where... 
you didn't have to go to all of the regions as you pursue the main story. So characters that were like brought into uh, later stages or the end epilogue scene, you could have never even met like how I played this, uh, the game. You have discovered Matariki Park's mountain habitat. The volcanoes may be sleeping, but that in no way means that there's no life here. These mountain peaks are home to Himalayan tar, chamois, and the mighty sambar deer, among others. If you're not scared by steep slopes and tricky trails, this is a place to challenge yourself. Yeah, and that looks like it should provide some really interesting hunting opportunities down there and even up into the hills as well. Okay, so we got that found, and we got this to inspect. Uh, zero common sense, no regard for vegetation, annoying meh bleats instead of paper instead of proper answers. And I'm not talking about the goats here, I'm talking about the entire Department of Conservation. At first, those people lead campaign drive ferals away from the forest. Then they succeed, to the point where goats are now invading my grounds, damaging unique plants I've been preserving for years. Worst of all, the department doesn't give a damn. When they request assistance, they tell me that their population model does not show any abnormalities in the area. I don't need a model to know that the real abnormality here is public servant thrusting a, trusting a dumb machine more than the seasoned landowner. I don't have anyone to rely on but you, dear visitors. If every hunter brings me brings down at least one billion, one nanny, it will be more than enough to stop the onslaught. To the best of you, I will even consider giving away my private hunting pass for free. As long as you don't side with Urkel, that asshat landowner who thinks he's onto something with his population control software. Sam. Okay, so whack a goat. So our objective for that is harvest a male feral goat in Poyamo Rise and harvest a female goat. Now Okay, so that's... Okay, that's going to be up north where we have to head for the Himalayan Tar. So we might have a few things we can go for while we're up there. And the door... Okay, that'll probably close on its own, I hope. Hey, it did. Automatic doors, how nice. Yeah, we're going to go up to that area, and since we'll have a couple of species we can go for, we'll try to get some hunting in this first episode. Sometimes the story and such can take a little bit to get through, but I want to try to get at least one new animal hunted in this very first episode for the series. And this is Cooper Bridge. Oh. I mean, that feels like a lot of negative space for just the small size of text on there. You couldn't have made it bigger to fit better? Uh, whatever. Let's get across and go on our way. Okay, so we want to stick to the main road until we leave the area that says the permission to hunt being required. You know, it looks like, yeah, there are some, honestly, really steep-looking trails, too. Like, now that we're getting closer, it looks like I'm more manageable on foot. But I definitely not want to bring the vehicle up that. <laughs> oh, boy. Okay, right, what is... Okay, space is break. I'm probably going to need that on some of these sharper turns. I mean... One con of going from controller to mouse and keyboard is I don't really have the sensitivity you have for the inputs on a controller. So we're basically just pedal to the metal, and I've got to break every now and then as we're trying to hit the corners and turns. Oh! Or we can smack... Okay, enough bushwhacking. We're gonna try and get somewhere. There we go. Couple of beeps, and let's keep in our way. Yeah, this area looks beautiful to hunt in. I think we're going to have quite a nice stay in uh, Matariki Park. Like, all the way the Hunter DLCs have been pretty good for what they've included in them, in my opinion. There's a host of animals to go for, you get some new equipment sometimes. I'm not going to say all the time, because, like, Matariki, you, well, I mean, you did get the one hunting tripod to use. Let me just check. Okay, yeah, we just gotta go north of ways more, and then we'll be there. Usually get some decent gear as, like, either free additions, or you can just play and unlock it. It feels like it's worth its money. We'll have to see if Matariki does hold through with that or not. Because, like, a number of species are kind of just carried over from some of the base roster in some of the other reserves. Okay, through that. Cliff of Craving. Okay, that's probably back between the tunnels, but again, we'll sightsee another time.
It shouldn't be too long before we'll probably be past the barrier, or I shouldn't say barrier, but the boundary of that hunting area. And we can try testing our skills and see if they've rusted or kept sharp with Cabela's. Oh. Okay, so we got feral goats all up there. Looks like they do travel in pretty big groups, so it shouldn't be too bad. The only issue is... Ah, they're not past the boundary. So all we can really do is just drive past them. Just give them a bit of a fright as we go. So, I guess... That is one of the issues about introducing, like, a herbivorous uh, species to an area, is you don't know what effect it'll have on the local plant life and vegetation. Oh, another hunting stand right here. Dang, are those more goats? Yeah, they are. Oh, and actually... Okay, I know I've scared them all off from here. But they are... I could try going for them here. Ah, uh, they have gone into some pretty dense area, though. Oh! Actually, also looks like the front end of the vehicle is smoking a little bit. I guess I shouldn't be too surprised given what I did to the poor thing. But I'm kind of tempted on maybe going into the tower and waiting to see if they'll come back around to here. Because I should remember to scout out where I see them grazing, because there are need zones in that back in the game. I shouldn't say back in, but this title has them. So if I can find some need zones and fill out the map, that'll give me some ideas of where we can come across them as we go with, like, in future hunts. I believe all I need is basically one uh, male and one female for them. I mean, a billy goat is kind of a common term, but I've never heard of a nanny goat before. I guess each species does have its own sort of, like, uh, assigned rules in a way. Like how they're called. Like, you have uh, stags and hinds, bucks and does, bulls and cows, that sort of stuff. So for goats, it's billies and nannies. And yeah, truth be told, I don't know if I will see them come back, or I've scared them to them venturing to, like, another spot. But it does look like we have a feed area here. Yes, they eat here pretty often. And then there are the animal trails that I could try following. I'm just going to keep an eye up to the bush there. Like, truth be told, what I should have done was maybe stop the hunting stand. Oh. Okay, we do have movement out there. So I think that's probably the goats. Again, I might just want to wait here for a while and see if maybe they'll come back now that I've given them a chance to cool down. And yeah, so far it looks like everything is pretty good for the recording session. Uh, audio capture I'll have to check once it all ends. Way of the Hunter, it is a bit more of a graphically demanding game than some others I've covered, so... The audio capture, as much as it doesn't look like it's been keeping up, it might actually be doing so, and it's just because the processing power is trying to manage so much currently. Looks like it's kind of lagging or stuttered behind. I'll see after this first episode, if there's anything I need to change up, that'll give me a good clue to it. But I don't think I have anything I can use to try to call the goats towards me. And I don't think I have them in the encyclopedia yet. Uh, did, oh, no, I do. They're a tier 5, so as long as I can get within range and a lung shot 
Uh, the rifle should handle them all right. Uh, you know what? No, I'm not going to place that. Because, I mean, there's a hunting stand right here I can use. Alright, I gotta remember, binoculars are number four. Five, I've got the tower right now. Yes, he still says they're out there, but I can't seem to... I mean, I can try sneaking closer and see if I can spot them at all. I actually don't... Again, I don't really know what species it is that's out there. It looks like, though, at least through there, it opens up a fair bit, so I kind of think I want to go uh, over this direction first and then take a look more to where I'm hearing the sound coming from. Instead of going for a direct route and possibly scaring off what's there, I'm going to speed up a little bit for the crouch. Just because with not trying to go directly for them, maybe that'll let me uh, cover ground a little bit quicker. Although... Oh. Okay, I also heard a noise from up there. Uh, let me see, is this a different need zone or am I just basically back to where I was? Okay, I think I was at this one. So yeah, let me try to work over here to the left and see. Uh, we've got some more tracks down here. Sandbar deer have been through here. Okay, it looks like... Yeah, it gets super dense here. I mean, if I did go slow with the bow, I might... Ooh. Yeah, I scared something off. Okay, not that I think I might have been able to see him, because as I'm looking through here... Yeah, that is dense. That's one thing I'll have to remember to adjust to, is... I'm not going to have the brain-dead animals like Cabela's sort of had to itself at times. The animals are going to be much more alert and aware of what I'm doing, so I'll have to remember to go slower and more careful. But at least this is letting me get a little bit of a taste of how this map might be. It might be I'll have to, instead of going through all this stuff, trying to reach the animals, it'll be trying to call them out of all this thick brush. I heard something different there. I don't know what that was, though. Uh, good news is, at least looks like we're getting to a pretty open spot here. Now, I know I heard some sounds coming up from uh, the hills a bit more there. Oh, there, I just heard it again, but I don't know what that... Okay, maybe I'll I'll keep going a little slow for now. Keep our ears open and see if we get any kind of noise we can hear. As I'm hoping that I move to an area that has a little bit more visibility around, we can spot something in the distance.
But yeah, it looks like a lot of the areas are going to be pretty densely vegetated. The array of collars we have will help us a lot, and thankfully the uh, way the hunter did something really nice, which is you can just change your loadout right from the vehicle. Apparently Call of the Wild the Angler didn't update to let you do that too. I just didn't realize that was a thing that they changed, so... Whenever I do get back to that series, because it does seem like there is quite a bit of interest for me to go back to it, I'll have to remember that. Okay, see, I am hearing noises, but... Okay, I'm going to head back towards our vehicle. I don't hear anything else out here. I think with the bit of faster movement I did, I spooked anything else that was here off. And I don't know if I'd get lucky and I, like, start coming back this way. And I can look out and see there's, like, a herd of goats that decide to come back. Yeah, no, it looks pretty calm here. Okay, I'm just going to walk us back to the vehicle and be on our way. Oh. Yeah, feral goat. Okay, I think I'm just starting to hear myself a little bit, and that's kind of making me paranoid. Yeah, I'm not seeing anything else, so we should be good just going our way. God, remember be a little slower as I'm going through here now that I actually can hunt in this area. I think I got a little cocky because we had finally left the... We were in the permission required area so much, I didn't realize that we'd shifted over. Yeah, everything's pretty quiet. Let's hop into that vehicle and keep going. I want to get something this first episode. It might take a little bit, but... Eh, we'll see. We will see. Okay, back in we go. And yeah, we're going to drive our way off and work up to... Uh, I think I'll put a marker right here. I think that's a good spot to say... We'll stop and put the vehicle there, and then we can go off on foot for whatever else we're looking for. Now, truth be told, though, it looks like right behind where the goats were, they might have come to more road. So maybe I should have just followed that rather than trying to go and follow into the bush. Eh, hard to say. Uh, you live, you learn, you bash the front of your vehicle into a few trees now and then. It keeps driving, so we're fine. I don't remember the brakes. Oh. Okay, so those are sandbar deer. I think they're actually a species we hunted uh, in the Hunter Classic. I think it was on the... Oh, and I think there's... Oh, no, they're... Oh, yeah, they are feral goats. Um... Oh yeah, I'll have to remember that this this does use a zeroing system too. Okay, you know what? I think I want to slow down and just go a bit on foot. Like I know everybody's freaked out and ran off, but looking from the map, the road does go straight north, so it's possible they might actually stay in the open if they're near it. And if I don't push them too aggressively, maybe that'll give me some clear shots with a rifle uh, right down the road to be able to try to get one. Uh, 
I'm just going to go a little bit quicker in order to get uh, kind of towards the corner a little faster. But then slow down as we near it. But yeah, they definitely... Okay, well... Okay, and there's some chamois, or at least one chamois, up in the mountains there. Yeah, looks like it's going to be difficult navigating with how some areas of the map are so steep. I don't want to push too hard, but I also don't want to go at too much of a snail's pace either. Yes, yeah, so there's chamois that have been in the area. I think they're kind... I'm trying to think of what the look of the chamois is. I think they're kind of like a uh, doll sheep or bighorn sheep. Sort of like a larger ram. Or, well, larger sheep species. Not 100% sure, though. Yeah, let me just... Okay, we're slowly getting around the corner. And that should let me get a good view... ...of whatever could be up there. Yeah, I don't know how far I might have pushed things or not. So I just want to go slow and careful and see if I can get lucky there. Yeah, it looks like it kind of goes uphill. Yeah, you know what? Since I'm not seeing anything, I am going to uh, speed up our trot a little bit. It looks like because of the way this sort of is like a valley or a dip down, everything might have just gone straight up the road. So I might leave the vehicle behind and go on foot for more of this. I'm not really after the... Sh uh, I don't have an objective for the sandbar, so I'll probably try passing on those if I can get a better view of goats. I would like to take a look and see if I can spot the chamois through our binoculars. Just so that way I have an idea of like what they actually are like as an animal. Now truth be told, if I can get far enough up the road, I think I'll have a uh, basically unblocked view be able to try to see that one that's been calling over there. And then... Okay, there is that weird sound. I never did figure out what that sound is from uh, when we're like in Hunter Sense and slowly trying to move about. Like, it chimes off randomly almost. I thought it was something that was ambience, but with coming back to the game and that being the first time I've heard it since we've been out and about... ...makes me think that's kind of like an indicator that something is starting to sense us. Almost like a little warning signal of... ...an animal is detecting you... ...and you should be careful about what you're doing. Or just come to a full stop for a moment. Okay, see, it's... Ah, oh, we can almost see it. It's actually not as far off as I... Oh, okay, it is still like 140 meters away. And it looks like it is just back behind, like, some of the hills there, so I can't quite get a good look at it. Am 
I haven't heard any sounds from the north here, so maybe things did run for... Ooh. There, just hit off again. Okay, it said something was way up the hill there. I'm just kind of looking back and forth. Like the chamois... It must be in all the thick of those little scrub bushes there. I don't think it's back up in the... Oh, uh... Yeah, it's just blocked by some of the vegetation, but... If I keep going, I might be able to get a view of it. Could even be behind, like, another hill or ridge with how that uh, seems to all be kind of together there. And we're slowly closing into the spot I was going to leave the vehicle. I'm going to stand up and go slow. Like, if I can hear it make another sound, I might be able to see it from here. I think I'll just have to, again, just keep going and seeing what happens. I might be playing this a little bit too safe, but I think that's the better approach to take after uh, how Cabela's could be and how easy it was to get the animals into points where you could take your shots. Oh. Okay. Only 120 out, so it's not that... Nope. Oh, well, I'm not going to be taking it with the bow at that distance. I need the rifle out for that. Oh, I see a little bit of movement in there. Yeah, it's right in there. And I gotta remember, to hold my breath, it's shift. Oh, yeah, it is basically just a little goat. Okay. Uh, 150, I think, is going to be too far out. Yeah, so let me just keep an eye on it. And there we go. Now, it doesn't sound like anything else went running off, so I think I'm good just to walk my way over and pick him up. Well, we got ourselves our first chamois. Nothing too major. I think that was just like... I can't remember if it was a young or an adult male, but I'm not going to be too focused on, again, trying to get the trophies to be uh, age up and grow. That was one of the things that I kind of wish I wasn't told about when it came to uh, the first entryways for Way of the Hunter. That's something after you've played and got some experience, then you can let that start going. But for just starting to learn the game and everything... I'd probably say just go for whatever you see and get your experience in. And here it is. Uh, looks like I did get a little bit of the heart clipped. If it was a little bit lower, it would have been a good heart shot. But one nice thing is I'm not aiming high like in Cabela's. Yeah, there we go. Hunt rating is 5. Trophy rating was just a 1. And it was an adult male. So not too bad. Sell that off. And I do want to check and see where that falls in the encyclopedia. The chamois is a tier 5. Okay. Oh, and actually, you know what? With coming up here to grab that. Yeah, looks like I don't really see anything too close. So I'm just going to go back to the road on foot. Oh. Okay, I just had that chime out again, but I don't know what... Four. I don't think there's anything around us I really spooked. Although it does look like there's something up in the hills there. 
I wonder if maybe I should try going... Actually, truth be told, I might want to go for that. I... It looks like just beyond what it is, is where the, uh, the Himalayan tar objective area is marked. So maybe I will get down to the road and try to make my way up there. And, oh, actually, it's a good thing I'm trying to make my way up there. As we've got a herd of feral goats waiting up there. Okay, let me just... Okay, yeah, activate that. Because we need to get that mission ready. And how far out are they? Okay, they're about 280 out. So there's... I think I should be good to speed a little bit closer to them. Once I get back to the road, I think that's when I'm going to go slow. And try to get a better shot in. Because I think they're another tier 5 animal, which means I want to make sure I'm within range and get a good vital hit. That should put them down easiest for us. I doubt I'll be able to get both with uh, this herd. But I might want to try going for the male feral goat first. I feel like the females are usually a bit more dull in their senses. Yeah, that's a fair size group of them. I just can't tell, like, which one would be a good... Uh, looks like maybe the one in the very back there is an adult male. So I think that's the one I'd like to try getting. I think what I'll do is I'll get to this bush here... Yeah, it doesn't look like anything's kind of looking this way as if they're picking us up. I do see a mature female in there. Uh, let me just try to see. Yeah, the mature female one is the second in. Ah, uh, there's an adult female there. Young female, young male. 185. I feel like that's going to be too far for... Oh, wrong weapon. I gotta remember, I got the rifle in the second slot. I feel like 200's... Oh, actually, that might work for us. Okay, but they are kind of shifting positions, so... Oh, I'm going to have to be crouched. They're too high in elevation for me to be able to get the shot off because of, like, uh... You can only aim so high up once you are flat and prone. Yeah, that's the one right there I'm thinking we'll get. Oh, again, I just... I messed up. Okay, rifle, please. Yeah, so we can bring that down. Okay. Uh, See, so he's kind of joining in with everybody else, so the shot's not going to be as easy to make. Uh, maybe. I'm pretty sure that's... Oh, they're kind of getting all globbed up, so it's hard to see. Uh, okay, looks like there's two adult males. So that's a young male out front, but that one right there... ...who is inconveniently behind a... Okay, so it looks like any of the males that kind of have the horns out to the side should do. I'm kind of thinking I want to bring it back to 100 meters. Just need to wait for one to stop in a U. Just stop anywhere before another bush. Bad goat. And the rest are all kind of blocked too. Now, let me just adjust a little bit. Ah, oh, no, it has to be crouched. Okay, you know what? Maybe this one here. Make sure I'm... Uh, darn it. They're... It's nice to see them... 
Yeah, we'll put down a marker. Okay, I'm trying to remember how I put down the... I know there's a way to put down, like, a tracking marker just as you're looking out in the world, but I can't remember how it's done. So yeah, I've got those two there. Let me just quickly check in the key bindings. How do I put down... Uh, X, that's it. Yeah, that's what I wanted to do. Okay, so X is how I... Oh, I guess I accidentally had the auto-walk enabled still. So it looks like they're all freaking out a little bit, so I'm just going to... See about trying to get these two. Because that should be a male and a female I just took. Or, well, hopefully we'll be taking. We know they're at least wounded. The blood looks like they're pretty large uh, pools left behind, so it should be a pair of vital hits. I just don't know how far away they ran from those. Although it looks like... Okay, there's one right there. So you know what? I might as well put a tracking mark there. Take care of that one. Actually, you know what? No, until I find out which one I picked up, I better leave everything as is. Yeah, so what did... Ah, uh, this was... A lot of air bubbles and expired quickly. So I'm thinking that one is tied to this guy right here. And let's grab that. Yeah, see, aim pretty high on that one. And I think that might have actually been the female. Because I think the female, I did get more of this view for it. Yeah, okay, that was a young female. So that means the male... Oh, and there's the male. So you know what? Let's get rid of... Get rid of that one. Get rid of that one. And we can collect the mail right there, and that should be that mission already completed, which is a nice step to getting another region opened up to hunt in. And then we should be good to... I'm thinking of leaving the vehicle behind and just continuing on to find the tar. Yeah, let's pick you up and see. Yeah, this is the one... Oh, just a little forward. I gotta remember, it's basically right above the front legs where the heart sits. So if I want to go for the heart shots, I gotta remember to go for there. But at least it was still a pretty good lung shot. And yeah, male adult, 219 for you. Whack a goat is complete. So let me just activate uh, this one. And we'll try making our way up to see about that, like, radio tower place. If I can get another chance at that herd of goats, I might even try to get another one. But I don't know if we will get lucky with it. Because I'm thinking they might have been scared off pretty well. Especially with me uh, marching my way up to collect those two. So yeah, they were... Uh, just up over on that hill, but I don't see any sign of them. But I don't think too bad of a start for the series. We got a chamois already. We've gotten the two um, feral goats we needed. Uh, that likely means there's another mission to pick up from here. Yeah, I do like that you can check and see there's actually like a little icon right there for another mission to grab. So maybe what we'll do is we'll try to get the Himalayan tar next episode. Go fast travel down to that little lodge in order to pick up the new uh, objective it has. And then see what else the main objective wants us for, like, the main storyline. It looks like this is, I thought, almost like a radio tower. And I, truth be told, I feel like that is what this place is. Ooh. I'm just going to go for a little bit of a jog to pick up the need zone from here. I think it's probably a goat uh, need zone. No, chamois. Oh, and yeah, I, sc I probably scared the goats that were moved up the hill off.
Okay, and... Yeah, I'm not sure what this little spot is. But it is the place marked on the map as like a question mark, so there's something... Just to discover here, I guess. Oh. Ah. Uh, Matepe Meteo Station. God, I do apologize. I am sure I'm butchering the pronunciation of so many of these uh, words so badly. But it's probably just going to keep happening in the series. I apologize. If you guys want to point out the correct way to pronounce them, feel free to in the comments. That way we can know just how horrible of a job I am doing. But look at all the way out there. Yeah, so... Basically... Oh, we're right on the verge of the Himalayan Tar territory, too. So next episode, we'll go searching through all that expanse and see if we can find what we're after. But for now, I think we've got a good spot to end the first episode of our Matariki Park DLC series right here. Thank you all very much for joining me on this episode of Way of the Hunter. If you did enjoy the video, be sure to give it a like. And if you have any comments, tips, or tricks, be sure to in the comments right down below. And until I see you all next video or episode, Hunters and Survivors, please remember, as always, to take care, stay alive, and happy hunting.